Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the Time Brush. Now, the Time Brush is really a combination of two things. It actually does have a graphical representation of your data in the form of a bar chart, but it's also a filter. Basically, how it works, as the name implies, you do kind of a brushing action against the bar chart or the column chart. And by doing that brushing action against the chart, it actually will filter down the other items that you have inside of your report. So it gives you the ability to do that. Now, it does have to be based off of some kind of a time element, or it should be based off some kind of a time element, as the name of the visual implies. It's a time brush. So you should really be looking at some kind of time data here as you do this. And basically what it'll do is, again, as you select the area of the chart that you want to filter, it will filter everywhere else on your data visualizations or your report based on the selection that you have in the time brush. So pretty simple to use. Let's take a look at how you can use it. And then first, we'll start, of course, where to go find it and then download it and install and use it. I'm going to continue to show the old method of how to get Power BI Custom Visuals. That's in the Power BI Custom Visuals gallery. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, that will take you here. But again, as I've mentioned a couple times now, this is actually kind of going away eventually. So I would recommend that you eventually go over to the office store. I'll show you in a moment here. But if you go to the visuals gallery, you'll scroll down towards the middle of the list and you're looking for one here called Time Brush. You'll select Time Brush and you'll use that one. If you're using the Office Store, which is kind of the future way you'll be able to find all these visuals, they're still in the process of migrating all of them over here, at least while I'm recording this. But you'll go to store.office.com, find Power BI as the product. You won't see it here, at least listed initially in the visuals that are shown. So you'll scroll down to the bottom, you'll see See More Apps on the bottom right. Select the Time Brush right here. So if I select the Time Brush Slicer, if you select that, hit Add. That'll tell you where to can download it. That will also point to you where you can find some samples. If you select the sample here, you can find some samples that Microsoft has provided to you. All right, so once we've downloaded it, though, we're ready to start to use it. So to use the Time Brush, we're going to go launch open Power BI Desktop here. And we're going to start by going ahead and pulling in some data. And the data that we're looking at today is going to be oil production data. You can find this, of course, if you go up to the Get Data section and select Excel. We're going to be using this oil production workbook here. And I'll hit Open. That's going to give us oil production thousands per barrel here in crude oil. I'll hit load. Bring this into the Power BI desktop. And once we've got the data here inside the Power BI desktop, we'll then go ahead and bring in the visual that we want to use. So the visual that we want to use is by bringing that in, we'll come over here to the visualization section. You'll hit the little ellipsis here to import the visuals from a file. Select import a custom visual and select import again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and find inside of where we've downloaded the custom visuals. I have mine here called Time Brush, and I'll go ahead and select Time Brush and hit Open. Once I've opened it, you can see it gives you a little success message here, and I'll hit OK. To really use and display this information here, there's two things we're going to do. Yes, we are going to use the Time Brush, but we're also going to bring in another line chart to be able to visualize how the filter from the Time Brush works with other visuals. So I'm going to select a line chart, and in the line chart, we're going to look at the date and oil production thousands per barrel. Okay, so we've got a little line chart here that we can see. And so basically what we're going to use this line chart for is to be able to see how the time brush is actually filtering other items. So we should see this filtered in a few moments. Then we'll go ahead and add in the time brush that you see right here. Oop, let me switch that back. I need to select something else first. Right now it thinks I'm trying to change this to the time brush. So let me select somewhere else in the background, then choose time brush, and then let's make that a little larger. And we're going to go ahead and put the date field against the date column here. And then we're also going to put the with values. That's the values that's going to be represented on this. That'll be the 1,000 barrels per day option here. Now, basic way of interacting with the time brush is you can select certain items in here or certain areas. So I can select, let's say, where I see this dip occur. Maybe I want it to get from 1980 to 2016 or 17. I can select that range of values. And as I select that, it filters down any other visuals on my report based on the selection on the top in the time brush. You can also move this around if you wanted to. I can kind of shift this around if I wanted to change the range that we're filtering. You can see that range of filter appears inside the report immediately. And it's very easy to interact with. It's just a matter of sliding it around. You can, of course, make it smaller. And if you want to remove it altogether, you can kind of click somewhere in the background. So that's how the time brush works in its most basic form. But let's kind of make this a little bit more advanced. You'll notice as you look at the time brush field well over here that there's something called segment by. And basically, segment by is something that gives you the ability to group certain areas of the time brush into different colors or different categorical views of the data. So rather than just seeing everything as this blue color, I want to see this kind of separated into different colors. And so the way we can do that is by creating a simple little DAX calculation. And I've kind of got it already copied off here on the screen, so you don't have to watch me type it here. There's going to be multiple ways you can do this calculation. I'm just doing one quick way here. 
But we're going to create another calculation in this data set by going over to my field list on the right hand side, right clicking on thousands per barrel, doing new column. And in the new column formula bar up on the top, we're going to create a new column called volume. And I'm going to paste this in here. Here's basically the calculation we have that we're doing. We're creating a new column called volume, and I'm saying if the number of barrels per day is greater than 6,000, then that's a high volume. If the number of barrels is greater than 2,000, then that's a medium volume. And anything greater than or equal to zero is a low volume. If it doesn't meet one of those standards, then it's NA. So I should have production on every one of these, so I shouldn't have NA pop up at all. But if I hit enter on that, that'll create this new calculation for me, a new calculated column, which you can see over here called volume. And if I select the time brush again, select it up top here, and I can drop in this segment by, I can drop in that volume column that we just created. Notice what happens when we do that. It creates a little separation in here where I can actually see a segment or a new color depending on the value that we have associated with each of the days that are inside of our data set. So it's kind of nice. It gives you a good way to be able to visualize where you have certain dips. In this case, you can see the red over here is really where it wasn't doing so hot. I can kind of select this open bigger area here and see this at the lower production time frame. If I want to see everything that's from the yellow to the red, I can do selection from all the way here to the end. And you can see kind of the nice upward trend that we had in the 20s to the 50s. So kind of an interesting way of working with it. I like the segment by option. I think that's a nice way to be able to visualize and see groupings of your data with inside of the time brush. So to finish this example, let's go ahead and select a portion of this. I'll select from 1990 to 2017, roughly about there. And let's also go ahead and go under the Format Paintbrush area and show you what else you can do with inside of this visual. So if we go under Format Paintbrush and make sure we have the visual selected, try that again. You can see there's a few things here that we can interact with. Underneath the Data Points section, you can do things like change the color. So if maybe I want to have, for example, the high volume to be something like more clear green here. You can select a different value here if you wanted to. Maybe I want the low value to stay red. And the medium volume can stay yellow if I want. Maybe a brighter yellow if I wanted to change that. I can certainly do that. So you have the ability to kind of change some of these things around underneath the data point section. You can also change under here where it says color mode. Right now it's set to instance, which is probably what we want to have here. But you can also switch it to gradient, which kind of does a gradient color in here, which of course you can adjust in here. You can make the starting color be one value, the ending color be another, and you can have what the start and end value should be. And within that, I'm going to keep it to the instance section here because I really like the way that we're able to specifically have multiple values in here, like our high, low, and medium volume in our data set. Under selection, you can also do something here where it says clear selection after data change. So it's kind of a long property there. But basically what that allows you to do is after the data is actually updated, you can have the selection clear because you might have new values appear. So right now we're looking at things through January of 2017, but we could have more values appear. So we want to clear out our selection so we can force ourselves to reselect something else. Underneath display, you have the ability to reverse the bars if you wanted to. You can also change the bar width. So if I wanted to increase the bar width that's inside of the time brush, I can increase this to something like 15. And you'll notice it kind of smooths out the lines a little bit. That's frankly just because it has the bars are much wider and they're kind of piling on top of each other there a little bit. But we've increased the bar width inside of this. It smooths it out a little bit when you do that. Let's make this something more like a 10 to compromise. If we keep moving down, you'll see underneath y-axis, underneath y-axis, you can actually show what the y-axis is. So you can see over here on the left-hand side, it actually does display the axis property here now. And you can see where do you want to show it. Do you want to show it on the left? Do you want to show it on the right? You can flip it back and forth from wherever you prefer to see it. You can also have where you can turn off the reference lines. If you want the reference lines turned off, you can do that. In my case, though, I think I'll just turn off the axis altogether. So I'll uncheck or turn off the show option here and just leave it off. Finally, the last couple properties are ones that you have in every one of the visuals that you interact with in Power BI. You can give it a title. You can change the background. You can lock the aspect so that whenever you resize it, it stays where it's at. I might actually do that. So that way, whenever someone tries to resize it, it keeps the perspective there. You can give it a border if you wanted to, which might make sense because it is a slicer. So you might want to kind of make it so that it's a clear differentiation from everything else in here. So that's how this one works. It's a pretty simple visual, but it's a nice one you can interact with. You can easily do some filters in here just by selecting certain values. After you select those values, you can slide it around. If you want to slide it to a certain section of the chart, you can do that as well. Now keep in mind here, as you also have other visuals, if I had another visual, you can do some cross-filtering either way. So it's a nice way to kind of interact with and show how you can have cross-filtering with inside of a report. That's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this custom visual. For our next one, we'll move on and get deeper into some other types of interesting visuals. Look forward to it.